Now, if you would indulge me, my friends, I want to help you to understand about the lead life. The lead life. And the first thing that I want you to understand is that if you're going to drum up any business with God, you have to understand something foundational, my friends. I promise you I love you. But I got to tell you, the butt naked, straight, no chase of truth. And that is this. You elevate in God when you lose your expertise. The realm of God is the realm of no experts. And it is no expert because of who God is. If God is anything, God is mystery. He's the God who is not like us. He doesn't think like we think. Isaiah reveals to us that he, his ways are not our ways. And yet because of who we are and the way that we are, we tend to want to make God be as close to us as we can. Because we have eat, we got needs, you see. We toe up from the flow up. And we are prone to craft spiritual spaces to cover us up instead of pushing us forward. So we use church to cover up stuff we need to be dealing with. So as long as I'm praising God, then it's all right. But I got some under me that I ain't looking at. And neither am I. Y'all done, I done, I, some of y'all done left me already. But, 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 the, but what, what my expression and my life with God is to reveal about me what needs to be cut away from me. And so God can't lean on our expertise. In fact, the whole realm of God is the God of mystery. It is about a God who is mysterious, who cannot be figured out. Who, a God who is not asking questions for information. He's a God who already knows what he's going to do. God is not discovering anything. He knows your end from the beginning. He is fully aware of all truth. God never learns. So God is not in heaven seeing what you're going to do to try to figure out what he's going to do after you do what you're going to do. God knew who you were before you knew who you were. And God already got the 411 on your next week. So you have to understand that when we're praying to God, we're not informing God of anything. Because God is sovereign. Does anybody in here know that he is sovereign? So you have to understand that your God is not a God that is ever surprised. We're surprised plenty, and so is the devil. But the God you worship is never shocked. And that's why you ought to not ever stop praising him because he knows you're behind. He knows everything about you. Even the stuff that has not even been revealed yet. God already knows. And so what God does in our life is God places things, leads us through things in, on the basis of what he knows and not on the basis of what we know. Y'all still with me in here? And so we have to understand that God is not like us and God is mystery. And so you cannot figure mystery out. As much as we want God to be in a pattern, God is beyond patterns. And so God doesn't fit neatly boxed religious experiences. 
because God is mystery. Now, here's the second thing that you need to understand. None of us, if we are going to be honest before God, none of us really know what we're doing. I just came to tell truth. None of us really knows what we're doing because there's no way that we can be experts for the realm of God. In the realm of God, there is no expertise. You cannot master mystery. You cannot master what you could never know. Now, our, our knack for controlling people in our life and circumstances in our life, our knack for the need to control is what is the basis for expertise. The reason why we want to be expert is because we got trust issues for real. And after you've been hurt and after you've been broken and after you've been abandoned and after you've been let down and after your heart has been torn to pieces, you don't want to go through that thing again. So you need structure and order. You need structure and order so that you can feel safe. And so then you want a God who fits in your safety box. You want a God that, that, that will fit that thing whereby you can feel okay with being you while you're being what God wants you to be. But God wants to break you out of your safety box. Because we should never build a relationship with God on the basis of our pain. We, so, we short circuit our progress in God when we develop a God for us that only is there to ameliorate our dis-ease. Am I still in the room? Are y'all still in here with me? I'm setting up the stage of where I'm going. And so you need to understand that you cannot master mystery nor the spiritual way of life that is predicated on mystery. So in the realm of no expertise, you got to know these four things. Watch this. If, if you're going to understand the mystery of God and the mysterious way of God, that there is no expertise. And what that means is, I don't know what I'm doing. Come on, say that. I don't know what I'm doing. Didn't that feel like? Now, now that's liberty for, for, for some people, but for some other people, you ain't trying to get with this at all. Because if you like me, a type personality, I got to know. I just got to know. I got to know what's coming up. I got to know what you about to do. I'm checking you out to make sure that you ain't doing something that's going to trip me up. I got to know. And I got to tell you, that's been my issue and been my difficulty in following with God. Because I got to know. I'm trying to be safe. I'm trying to make sure that folk around me are for me. I'm trying to make sure that I can count on some folk. If I give you a job to do and leave you with it, I'm looking for results. If I don't get results, we got a conversation that will not take long. I'm just talking about myself. Now, I ain't talking about y'all. I'm just talking about me. But that doesn't work in the life of the spirit. Because the Holy Spirit is not using your expertise. Trust me, when you've ever heard the Holy Spirit talk to you, the Holy the Ghost is never asking for your opinion. The Holy Ghost never pulls you in the room and says, hey, what you think? <laughs> it's, the, it's that place of no expertise. So in order to begin with God, I have to start. How Jesus said it like this, deny yourself. The beginning is that I don't know what I'm doing. I really don't know what I'm doing. The second thing is that you can't know what to do. Although I would like to know, are y'all still with me? Although you would like to know what to do, the truth is you can't know because it is beyond us. That's why when we get into the prayer room and when we get into the worship space, we're not asking God for information. We're asking God for revelation. Revelation is knowledge you could never know unless it has been revealed. And that's why those who live on revelation go in faster quantum speeds than those who are relying on information. Information takes you to a certain pace. 
that is equivalent to the frequency of the world and the earth. But revelation, revelation supersedes that frequency and you operate on a higher spiritual frequency and you hear things that others don't hear and you see things that others don't see and you sense things even before they develop because you're on a higher frequency than everybody else and everybody looking at you like you're all there weird and you got to look at them and say yes I am weird I am in the realm of the spirit And so not only do you not know what to do, you can't know what to do. And then the third thing you need to know is you don't have to know what to do. You don't have to know what to do. And why? Because the shepherd is leading. Now, if there's anything that we need to be taught as Christians is that we need to learn how to follow. Some of y'all bored with this already. But let me tell you something. This is some powerful stuff I'm giving you right now. Listen to here. Listen here. You will not progress in the realm of the spirit if you got to be the one that leads it. I just preached this morning about in my church about Luke 9 where after the three disciples came down from the mountain of transfiguration and they went down to the valley and couldn't heal the man's son and Jesus did the deal and healed the son then soon after that after they saw great glory and after they saw God do a miracle the Bible says in the next verse after that that the disciples the church folk the saints the holy ones were arguing over who is greatest among them see that's that's what we do in church because in, in church that we, we we don't we want we are more about position and power influence we want to have stature we want to have stature we want to have glory we want God to put something in our hands so that we can lay a whole lot of folk out We want, we want that power. That's what we want. We cry, we, we cry for power. Because we have, we, we, it is, that's a response to being broken. It's, it's, it's a response. It's, it's when you have been missed over, misdiagnosed, when you have been dealt with in, in a negative way, you've been hurt, you've been injured. You want to be empowered. That's human. That's human nature. We want power. And so we go to God for power. We go to God for position. Same the way these disciples went to God. They were following Jesus because they wanted Rome off their neck. They wanted Rome off their neck. And so they were following Jesus for a different purpose than Jesus was really leading them. And so the problem with the church today and many of our churches is that we got a leadership problem. Not a pastor problem, a leadership problem. Because the leaders are too self-centered in order for real power to come down in a house. So if pastor don't call on me, I got an issue. If everybody's being used, but I'm sitting up here and ain't said nothing, I feel like I ain't being used, I got an issue. Of course, that's not happening here at Growth Point. I'm just talking about what I'm talking about. We want to lead, get this, for, even in the back, y'all get this. We want to lead, but we do not want to be led. Are y'all still all right in here? So now you got to hear with the 23rd song. I'm not going to finish this whole thing. I just want to start off with just the first few verses. If I can just explicate these first few verses, I will get out of y'all way and y'all can go eat some chicken or whatever y'all want to eat after that. But listen to what this psalm says because this psalm reveals to us about the led life. The Christian life in its strength is a life that you don't know where to go. It is a life where your ability to be able to predict is not even important. 
it is a led life. Come on, say that with me. A led life. Tell your neighbor, this Christian life is a led life. Tell your neighbor. I don't have to know what to do in order to do what I need to do. And it is one of the secrets of the kingdom. And it is explicated in this 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd. Back in this time that they're writing this psalm, shepherds are very common. Shepherds are very uh, common. There's a lot of shepherds. People have sheep and they're taking care of sheep. And I would submit to you, my friends, that sheep is the most ac accurate, perfect theological description of church folk. If God wanted to help us to understand how we are in our tendencies, he did the right thing by calling us sheep. Look at your neighbor and say, bad. <laughs> sheep. Sheep gets lost real easy because sheep can only see six feet in front of them. It's not that they're blind. They're just short-sighted. They just can't see too far. And so this is how sheep gets lost. Can I show you how sheep gets lost? They see what they see. They go toward what they see, but they can only see six feet. Then they see something else six feet away, and they go to that. Then they see something else six feet, and they go to that. And before you know it, they have gotten out of earshot of the shepherd. This is why shepherds led their sheep back in this day by their voice. It is the voice of the shepherd that guides the sheep. The sheep cannot do what they need to do by seeing it. And all these folk that want to see God and all these people want to see some revelation. It's not in what you see. Faith comes by got to make sure that my ears are clear because there's a whole lot of shepherds in the valley so you got to know in these times in that time back in that day there was not one shepherd there was a whole lot of shepherds and watch this watch this all of the shepherds had their sheep on the same field your sheep and your sheep and your sheep and your sheep is in the same area as my sheep. So how can the sheep keep from getting mixed up? It's not by what they see. It's by what they hear. They are familiar with the shepherd's voice. So each shepherd in that time had their own unique call. They had their own unique call. Listen, can I just stop here parenthetically and say that only those who understand and can recognize the growth point call will follow the growth point lead. But you got a lot of other people that's got some mixed up in their spirits because they have been so used to hearing so many other calls that they're confused while they're sitting in your midst. You will not stay here if you are not connected with the growth point call. I'm just trying, ain't trying to mess up nothing. I'm just saying everybody that's in here ain't in here. How can a sheep in that time not follow the wrong shepherd because they've had enough intimacy with the shepherd that they are connected with where they can recognize their shepherd's call? Yes. Listen here. Touch five folk and ask, who is your shepherd? I know. Now, now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up because a super saint's going to say, my shepherd is God. I already heard you. I already heard you. I only got one person that can tell me what I need to do, and that's God. You are out of order. 
If the only person that can give you direction and instruction is God, why are you up in here? Why don't you help yourself and go on somewhere? So when the shepherd speaks and gives the unique call, only that shepherd's sheep would respond. So the sheep would not have to see the shepherd. Because even if they were far away from the shepherd, if they heard the familiar call, they would walk toward the sound. I think there's some folk in here that hears a sound in their spirit and they are disturbed in their body because they keep hearing a call that's familiar to their spirit. God is calling you to a higher level and you will not rest until you get to the source of that voice connected to you. If y'all sit down, sit down. <sighs> the Lord is, the writer is looking at shepherds and the way shepherds are to give a clue to the spiritual life. Okay, I need to do some, I'm already been too long. So let me, let me just give you a few of these verses and now go sit down. Just a few. Just for you. So in the lead life, watch this. You don't discover anything. You're led to it. So now remember this. You don't have to know where it is. You don't need a prophetic word. To know what to do next. Just simply be led. You see, you got to understand that many of us in the church are power hungry. So we want to have the authority to manipulate. God does not want you to be codependent on anybody. He wants us to be interdependent on one another, but totally dependent on him. And so the one who is led need not confirmation. Rewind plus pray. The person who is led by the spirit needs no confirmation. But if you led by some other spirit, you need all the confirmations in the world. The Lord is my shepherd. Watch this. In the led life, you are led to provision. Did y'all hear me? When you're following God and your life in God is where it needs to be, you understand that you don't know where your next provision is and you don't lose any sleep over your next provision because you know that you will be led to provision. The Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. Y'all didn't hear that. I know y'all didn't hear that. The reason why I'm telling y'all that y'all didn't hear that is because y'all still sitting like y'all ain't heard nothing. The shepherd, God, leads you to provision because the Lord knows the provision that ignites your spirit. He knows the provision that is right for your assignment and you don't know where that is. You can't know where that is, but you don't have to know where it is because if you're following what God instructs you to do in the process of obeying God, you've run into provision. Are y'all still okay? So let me get a check in the room. Does, is anybody in here, is there anybody here that can testify that you just happened upon provision? I mean, you just ran into provision. It wasn't part of your plan. You didn't seek it out. It wasn't anything that you had a cue to, but you were just doing the will of the Lord. You were just doing God's will. And in the process of doing God's will, you ran up on provision. 
because we're led into that. Come on, touch your name and say, I ain't got to know nothing. I'm just led. Because see, watch this. Jesus said it to you already. He said, I am the, the, and the. Y'all don't even know what that is. If he is the way, then you ain't got to know it. Everybody know what GPS is now. Just got these wonderful things. iPhone comes from God. I'm just saying. <laughs> and you understand how to follow the dictates of Siri and maps. So you don't even have to ever been there before, but if you plug in where you're going, it leads you step by step to where you don't have to know. If you trust the GPS, you'll get where you're going. All I'm trying to tell you is that you don't have to know where your next meal is coming from. You don't have to know where your next car is coming from. You ain't got to pray and fast for a car. Just be led to your provision. Okay, okay, I didn't get no energy on that at all. Let me keep moving on. Uh, not only is it, here's, this, if, this, if, if the one first thing didn't hurt you, help you, this will really help you. We're led to provision. Come on, somebody confess, I'm led to provision. God will lead me to divine provision. Listen to me, what I'm trying to tell you. I'm, trying to, I'm not trying to belabor the point, but I'm trying to tell you that everything you need has already been established. Listen here, I told you that the God that we worship already knows your future before and your past. He got everything. So he has already established your provision before you can even get there. You don't have to know it, and he shown up ain't going to tell you, because if he told you, you'd screw it up. And so he just simply leads you to your provision. He leads you to it. I'm trying to tell you that there are blessings around you that you haven't seen because you can only see six feet in front of you. I need to get out of Lexington. Ain't nothing happening in Lexington. I need, I need another place that I got to be. Kentucky is just so behind. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The world and they that dwell there. If Kentucky is in the world, then guess what? God is here. I need to go to Atlanta. It's popping in Atlanta. It sure is. You can go and have that Atlanta. But if you got a God that only acts in certain places, he ain't God at all. That's the problem with y'all church hopping, trying to find the right church. There ain't no right church. But you can only find the church that's right for your assignment. Not the church that's right for you. It's the church that's right for your assignment. You got to get connected to why God made you in the first place. Because that church ain't for everybody. Hey, Amen. I'm just trying to tell y'all about the shepherd. <laughs> well, here's the, we're, not only are we led to provision, but get this. Verse 2 tells us that we're led. Here's, this is going to help somebody. This is going to help somebody. That not only are we led, 23rd Psalm teaches us this, that not only are we led to provision, but we're also led away from distractions. It's right there in the Bible. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want, watch this. He makes me sit down in green pastures. That's the provision. That's the provision. Some of your greatest blessing is in places you ain't trying to go. And your provision is where you don't want to go. <laughs> your next blessing is in the place you ain't trying to go. 
So God has to get involved in your life and cause you to lay in places, languish in places until you're led to your provision. The process of laying in undesired places is to weed that ego out of your heart. But he also leads us away from distractions. Is this going to help somebody in here? Because we're too distracted. So he leads, he maketh me lie on the green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. You ever ask the question, what's up with that? Why do sheep need to have still waters? And why do they need to be led beside it? It ain't that they're thirsty because they're led beside still waters. But sheep are very easily agitated. Sheep are very easily scurred because they can hardly see. And so if they're going to have peace while they're eating their provision, the provision has got to be near still waters. Which means that God will lead you in places away from those influences that easily distract you from your purpose. And the reason why some of us are still dealing with distracting environments is because we are in the way. We're busy trying to tell God what to do. We're busy informing God how he needs to bless us. We're busy trying to command God to do some things that we really want. And God ain't saying nothing to you because he knows that you really don't need it. Thud, that word just went straight to the carpet, I'm telling you. Because we're so used to wielding what we feel is our divine authority. Like some of y'all be talking about that you got to remind God of what he promised. I don't know what God you talking about. But the God I know don't forget nothing. Because he ain't finding nothing out. He ain't learning nothing. In fact, he made your brain. If he made your brain, why you got to remind him of what he promised? I done messed up half the church already with that one right there. He leads us, and you know the reason why we're, so, we're because we're so easily distracted. Because we're so easily distracted, he can't tell us what's next because we're getting away. So he has to lead us away from stuff. So that's why when God gets involved in your stuff, he's got to cause friends to leave you. He has to get involved in your process so that what you want, that what you thought was yours, what you thought God wanted you to get, God refuses to give to you because your heart ain't right and you ain't willing to admit it yet. So he doesn't even have a meeting with you. He just moves sovereignly in your life to pull you away from things that you knew was your breakthrough. You prayed for that thing. You, you, you labored before God before it and God said no. Because what he knew and you didn't know is that even that blessing can be a distraction. How many of y'all know that you can be distracted by a blessing? And so he doesn't leave that journey up to you. He leads you away from distractions. That blessing, it looked it good to you. They talk real good and nice to you. They bought you gifts, complimented everything that you did, made you feel real good about yourself. And you said, it is the Lord. <laughs> and then about six months later, you praying for deliverance. Because you were paying attention to your eyes and not your ears. Bah. So now 
I got to tell you about leading from distractions because church can be a distraction. Church can be a distraction. I'm not saying don't come to church. I'm saying make sure you're hearing God. Because we can let our responsibilities get in the way of us being led. Especially when we get to thinking that I got this thing now. I know what to do. I'm the chairman of this ministry. I got position. I got authority. And your neck can get all crazy. Y'all acting like y'all don't know what I'm talking about. And God then has to bring you down. And you mad at the church because they set you down. But God saw your heart. Y'all done got quiet on me. I'm just trying to talk about the 23rd Psalm to tell you that in the led life, not only are we led to provision, but we're led away from distractions. Let me go ahead and give you my final. I got a whole lot more, but I'm not going to give it y'all to it. I'm just going to, I'm just going to give you this last one. Verse three. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me lie down in the green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. Watch this. He leads me. Somebody say, he leads me. Please. Look at your neighbor and say, he's leading, he's leading me. Can I tell you something about God's leading? Yes. You are being led by God whether you acknowledge it or not. Where the praises at? Where y'all at? Y'all ain't praising no more. God is leading you. See, this is so much against traditional church and usual church. But hear me. God is leading you whether you acknowledge him or not. He leads me, watch this, in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. That's the last one I'm going to give you. I'm, I'm, I'm just going to stop right there. And uh, I, I'm going I'm I'm to leave it right there. I feel glory in my spirit right now. So now, if you've heard anything I've said, saints, if you've heard anything I've said, you need to get this. We do not know the righteous way. But the way we know that we call righteous is a way we have created. That feel good to me, boy, I'm telling you. That's so powerful, y'all don't even catch it. Did you hear what I just said? If you want a definition of denominations, the definition of denominations are contrived ways of righteousness. that were created in history as if time never changes. But we don't know the way of righteousness. We have to be led. Now, another way of describing righteousness is this. We are led into appropriate choices. The way of righteousness is choosing the right thing at the moment you have to make that decision. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? That's the path of righteousness. And here's the good news. God, who knows the way of righteousness, wants an intimate relationship with each of us so that he can guide us into that way. I don't know it until he leads me. He leads me and the right choices. My friends, I came all the way to Shelbyville, Kentucky to tell you this. It is no badge of honor to be an expert. How liberating it is when you wake up in the morning to not have to know what you ought to do. I'm not talking about going to work. I'm not talking about paying your bills. You better do those kind of things. Amen. Pay that rent. Pay your mortgage in Jesus' name. <laughs> Amen. Amen. If you got some issue, take all of your medicine as indicated. Every bit of it. 
before you come to church. In Jesus' name, take all your medication. A bit of it. <laughs> but as it relates to your purpose, let me say this, and I'm closing when I say this. God never, ever ordained for you to have to search for your purpose. I'm in church trying to find my purpose. The devil is a liar. Purpose language is Genesis 3 language. Did not God say that you are not to eat of that tree in the center of the garden? You shall not die. For God knows that if you eat of what he told you not to eat, you'll be just like him. It is the language of purpose. And if I have to search for my purpose, I do not have a relationship with God. For God did not save me to find my purpose. God saved me to die. God saved me to die to myself. God saved me to lose myself in him. And therefore my only purpose is him. And how that purpose is lived out, only he can show me. I do not have to look for it. I do not have to sign up for a gazillion uh, lessons on internet. I don't have to have a coach. I don't have to have people that I look up to to help me to fulfill my purpose. My purpose is found in him. And when I go to him, it is in him that I find my why. And when I find my why, I'm no longer competing with you. When I find my why in him, there is no way that you can stop me from being blessed. There is no way that you can short circuit whatever God has for me. There is no way that I should be rolling my eyes at you thinking that you're taking my position. If God don't want me to have it, I can't take it even if I wanted to. But whatever God has for me, it is for me because I'm allowing him to lead me into paths of righteousness for his name's sake. It ain't for my benefit. It ain't for my uplifting. It ain't for my blessing. It is for his name's sake. And so all I came to tell you is that real church happens when you got a dead church. Real church happens when a church is really dead. I'm not talking about dead in, ain't no life in there, ain't nobody praising, ain't nobody. I'm not talking about, I'm talking about a church full of folk who have died to themselves. They're no longer going to God saying, bless me, bless me, bless me, give me, give me, give me. Wah, wah, wah. But when you find a church, there are people who are connected to that church where they have completely put aside what they want. They put aside what their ambition is. And they say, my only ambition is him. If that's what you believe in and that's where you are, why don't you give God about 60 seconds of the best worship you could ever give him because he's blessing you in spite of yourself.
It's a layered life. You don't know what you're doing. You can't know what you're doing. And the good news is, you don't have to know. If he knows it, then trust him. Listen, he will, I'm about to sit down. He will lead you in ways that don't look like church. He will lead you in ways that don't look like saved anything. Because the earth is the Lord's, not the church is the Lord's. The earth is. Yeah. Yeah, it's a layered life. And you don't have to know what you're doing. But just trust the shepherd to give you what you need. God bless you. Thank you for watching the message. But I want to make sure that you're connected beyond the message. Visit our website or stay connected to all of our social media sites so that you can find different ways to get plugged in. I would love to meet you on Sundays at 1 p.m. or our first Tuesdays for our Impact Night. Be sure to like and subscribe and even share this channel so that we can continue to reach people. If you would like to help us even reach people further, please click the Give Now button when you visit our website. Thank you, and I'll see you next week.